Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to explore what line integrals are. So we're going to start a series of videos on line integrals. At the top level, you can have four different kinds of line integrals. And basically, what a line integral is, it's an interaction between a path that we take and a particular either scalar or vector field. So what it is, it's the value of a scalar field or the value of a vector field as we're traveling along a path going through that vector field or along that scalar field. So here we have four different examples at a very top level and then we'll get into a little bit more detail in the videos to come. So here we have an example where we have a scalar field, for example, a surface, which is a function of the position x, y, and z. And then we're going to travel along that surface. So we're going to evaluate the value of that surface along the path that we take and sum all those values together. And that's what we call a line integral. The result of that is that we're going to end up with a scalar value. And we'll see later what that scalar value signifies. We could also have a scalar field where we, we travel along a path which is defined by a vector, like a direction along that path. So instead of having a scalar small segment, we'll have a vector small segment. And so for example, let's say we have a surface and we travel in a particular direction along a line on the, on the surface of that surface, we add up all the values of that and the result of that will be a vector quantity rather than a scalar quantity. Now the type of line integrals that are probably most common is where we actually travel through a vector field. For example, we can have a vector field that's directed like this, so we can see that it changes direction. It looks like it's constant amplitude or magnitude, but it does change direction. So if we travel from A to B, you can see that the interaction of our path and the direction of the vector field changes. The angle between the two directions change which means that we need to keep track of that via what we call a dot product. So we multiply the vector or the magnitude of the vector field at a particular location along the path of travel and we multiply that via dot product with a small segment of our path and then we add up all those segments together. Now the result of that will be that we end up with a scalar quantity because when we multiply via dot product two vectors together we get a scalar. For example, let's say we're trying to find the work done by a force that acts on an object that travels on a particular path. So again, the work found would be the dot product between the force and the direction or, or the, the direction of travel. And finally, we can have a situation where we have a vector multiplied by a direction, a small little direction segment, but in this case we're going to use the cross product rather than the dot product. That's, for example, we have a situation where we have a magnetic field called the B field and a charge moving through the field. And the amount of the interaction between them depends upon the angle between them. And it depends upon the sign of the angle. If the angle is zero degrees, there's no interaction. And when it's 90 degrees, we have maximum interaction. So therefore, we need to cross product to find out the total magnitude of that interaction. So here we can see that the line integral will be simply equal to the magnitude of the field, in this case the, the magnetic field or it's, it's a vector field, and we multiply that times the direction of motion and the amount of the motion. When we integrate over that, then we end up with what we call a, another vector quantity. The result is a vector quantity, and the result will be perpendicular to both vectors, the B field in this case and the direction vector in this case. So here I called it A, probably should call it a B to stay consistent. So there we go. So here you have some examples at the top level of what line integrals are. They're by no means the integration of the length of a line. That's something completely different. But we'll see in the next several videos what the meaning of these line integrals actually are by showing you some nice little examples. And we'll work through them at more and more complicated examples. So that's how it's done. And that's what we mean by line integrals.